atheists, ugh, gross. With their devil worshipping and not believing in a god, they're disgusting. You should probably hate them. And good friend of the channel, Dallas Wade, is going to point out why, kinda. Hello, I'm the Skeptic, the British floating circle that watches people make extraordinary claims and then I explain why I don't accept what they're saying. I'm away on vacation this week, so Dallas Wade has stepped in with a belter of a video. I was given a chance on YouTube because of Simon Dan and Sir Sick, so it's only right to give back, so check out Dallas's channel after this video. But before we discover just how hateful we are, if this isn't your first Skeptic video, hit the like, the subscribe and the bell and you won't hate the amount of content like this that gets suggested to you. And a super thanks to those that hit super thanks in some recent videos. The Operator 9, user RH2TJ3GY3K, Lord Lumen is Poo 4589, and Tabor Turtle. Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe bestows leaves upon you all. More hen. Take it away, Dallas. Hey, what's up? I'm Dallas Wade, and today we are going to find out why atheists are miserable, Satan-worshipping Freemasons. Matthew Curry is a Christian YouTuber who plays music, loves animals, and very much hates atheists. If you're an atheist, you should be ashamed. You people are psychopaths. You're just a bunch of psychopathic atheists. I think these are some of the sickest, most evil people in the whole world. They're doing such evil things that they hate the idea of God being even real. These people are the most toxic people in the whole world. They're literally poisoning the minds of everybody. But I'm going to give Matthew the benefit of the doubt and assume that his disliking of atheists is based on some very poor misconceptions. And hopefully by responding to some of his anti-atheist videos, Matthew will see the error in his ways, and at which point he can devote his channel entirely to playing music and documenting adorable animals. I mean, come on, he's got curious groundhogs, majestic cats, and absolutely jacked squirrels. That's the kind of content I would subscribe for. But unfortunately, as of now, Matthew mostly uploads videos ranting and raving about atheists. So let's see what he's got to say. You know what's truly so ridiculous about atheists? I don't know, is it the fact that we film our videos in landscape rather than portrait? The thing that they hate the most is a book full of good words. They hate the good book. I know that you're referring to the Bible here, the good book, and I also know that you're wrong. While it might be accurate to say that most atheists dislike the Bible, it is not at all accurate to say that every single atheist who has ever lived all hate the Bible more than everything else that has ever existed. I don't dislike the Bible any more than I dislike any other book that contains misinformation and bigotry. And I still wouldn't say that I necessarily hate the Bible, since the Bible is a collection of ancient myths, legends, and poems. And because of that, it does contain a wealth of insight into the ancient world. And there is value in that. What I do hate, though, is when people use those ancient myths or poems to justify being awful, terrible people today. But that's just my opinion. Other atheists have other opinions, and the only thing that every atheist has in common is that we're not convinced that a god exists. They hate text that people fall in love with when they study it, when they realize that it happens to be true. You say that it happens to be true, but how do you know that? Can you demonstrate that? And how is it that all of these people realize that it happens to be true? And if you know that, then why are you sharing it? Wouldn't that make for a better video? See, but the Bible is like a mirror. It makes people examine themselves. The Bible is like a mirror, but not because it makes you examine yourself. The Bible is like a mirror because Christians tend to see their own values in it. If you want to love everyone, then you'll find where the Bible tells you to do that. And if you want to destroy your enemies, then you'll find where the Bible tells you to do that. The Bible is a buffet, and we've got some hungry confirmation bias. That's why there are thousands of denominations of Christianity. Because whether you want tacos, a pork chop, or maybe some mac and cheese flavored ice cream, the Bible has it all. It's all up to you. Have it Yahweh. It's a very clear thing. The Bible rebukes wickedness. So people who are engaging in wickedness hate the Bible. It's very simple. It's good versus evil. 
But wickedness or evil, in your opinion, is just whatever the Bible rebukes. So you saying that the Bible rebukes wickedness is just saying that the Bible rebukes the things that the Bible rebukes. That's circular reasoning. I have absolutely no reason to care about what the Bible rebukes or what you as a Christian call wicked until you can demonstrate that the Bible and Christianity are true. And until you can do that, I am just going to say that wickedness is whatever increases the suffering in the world and that goodness is whatever increases the health and happiness of the world. And you know what? At least I can demonstrate that this world and the people living in it exist, whereas you haven't yet demonstrated that the spiritual world or the characters living in it do. Two things atheists can't stand. Again, not all atheists share the same opinion, but I will say that two of the things that I personally can't stand as an atheist are one, Christians saying that atheists worship Satan, and two, Christians saying that atheists secretly do believe in a god. Number one, they can't stand anybody questioning the basis of their faith in atheism, which is pseudoscience. First of all, the only basis of atheism is not being convinced that a god exists. That's it. That's all of it. And secondly, where the hell do you get the idea that atheists are against asking questions? You do realize that a large portion of us, including myself, used to be religious. And we left religion because we asked questions. Obviously, it wouldn't be true to say that all atheists are open-minded skeptics, but generally speaking, atheists are significantly more open-minded and skeptical than Christians. Christians glorify having faith, believing in that which which can't be demonstrated. Even if it doesn't add up, even if the evidence shows otherwise, and even if there is no defending it. You just gotta hold on, have faith, because great is your reward in heaven, even though we can't prove that heaven exists, but hallelujah, you better have faith that it does. Find me one atheist that does anything like that. Most public atheists, anyway, encourage people to think logically and ask questions, because skepticism is the first step towards truth. I feel like I've heard that somewhere complete fantasies that are made up by liars who openly fly their Freemasonic symbolism. You cannot be serious. You think that Freemasons are atheists? You do realize that, aside from being a legal adult, the very first requirement to be a Freemason is believing in a supreme being. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian, Muslim, Jew, or Hindu, that's all good, but you can't be an atheist. So this atheist-Freemason connection is about as strong as your grasp on reality and promote satanic concepts through the media and all of society. Atheists don't believe in Satan. You do. They created that theory that allows you to think that you will get off scot-free for all the evil things you've done and said in your life. What theory? Are you talking about evolution? The theory of evolution doesn't have anything to do with an afterlife or morality. Evolution isn't a replacement for God or religion. You can, and many people do, recognize that biological evolution is a fact of reality and still believe in a God or an afterlife. You can recognize evolution and still subscribe to whatever moral framework you want to, because it's not related. And even putting evolution aside and just comparing atheism to Christianity, atheism in no way implies that there aren't consequences to our actions. There are, but they're in this life, which is the only one that we know that we're getting, which makes it that much more severe. In Christianity, however, the consequences in this life ultimately don't matter, because this life doesn't matter. No matter your actions, no matter the pain you've caused, and no matter the reputation that you've earned for yourself, as long as you get right with the Lord and ask for his forgiveness before you die, you're going to live in a paradise of pleasure forever and ever. Or, in your words, you will get off scot-free. They're telling you there's just no God. Well, the people who are telling you this, they know there's a God. No, I don't. And you have yet to demonstrate that one exists. They know there's a God. They actually worship the devil. I have literally never worshipped the devil. Again, atheists don't believe in the devil. You do. They serve the devil. Nope, I've never done that either. Again, who believes in the devil? It's not atheists, it's you. So, they don't want you to know that there's a god. If there was a god and I knew that it existed, I would want all of you to know about it. But right now, I don't believe in a god, and until Matthew here can demonstrate that one exists, I'm probably going to keep on not believing in one. So, I don't expect my belief there is going to change anytime soon. And so, you hate the questioning of your pseudoscience, and you also hate the truth of the Bible in Jesus Christ. And that's sad. What truth? You have yet to demonstrate that anything is true. You've said that a lot of stuff is true, but that's every bit as far as you've gotten. 
Imagine being alive in one of the best times to be alive, one of the most blessed and comfortable times to be alive, and choosing to end up in hell for eternity because you're so scared of a bunch of miserable, crabby, snarky, conceited atheists. Wow, Matthew, why don't you tell us how you really feel? A bunch of people who are so miserable in their own belief, and they live by the old saying, misery loves company. They just have to bring everybody else down into their demise. What makes you think that atheists are so miserable. Where are all of the miserable atheists? Can you show me? And even if you do find some miserable atheists, does their misery have anything to do with their atheism? Or are they miserable for some of these same reasons that non-atheists are also sometimes miserable? The only times I've experienced any amount of misery as a direct result of my atheism were the times that Christians treated me poorly for not being a Christian. But that's more of a Christian problem than an atheist one. And also, while I obviously can't speak on the behalf of every atheist, I will say that for myself, I'm not trying to make people atheists. I don't care if people believe in a god or an afterlife or not, that's none of my business. What I do care about though is people believing in a religion that demands they have faith rather than skepticism and encourages them to be bigots. That's harmful, that's miserable, and not only to the person who believes in it, but also to myself and everyone else. And that's exactly why so many atheists do speak out against religion. It's not because we want everyone to wear a fedora and grow a neck beard, it's because we don't want people to be miserable or spread misery. To their pit of knowing that they don't have that thing that makes people truly happy, the thing that has fueled America, the thing that has been the motivation for all our progress in America and for people to turn their lives around and to keep going in hard times. Now, they don't have that one comfort that we Christians have, so they have to bring everybody else down to their same misery. If you think that Jesus has motivated all of the progress in America, then you really need to brush up on your American history, specifically around the early 19th century during the abolitionist movement. What you'll find is a plethora of literature written by Christian pastors using scripture in opposition of the abolitionist movement. And to this day, Christians also use scripture in opposition of women rights and LGBTQ rights. So no, Jesus is not motivating progress in America, and he never has. And while it is true that Jesus, or Christianity, has made people happy, changed lives, and gotten people through hard times, it's also true that other religions work just as effectively. And do you know what also works every bit as effectively as religion? A crap ton of other stuff like family, friends, music, hobbies, and even entertainment. So no, your Jesus isn't all that special. This isn't real life, like, this isn't real life. You sound like you've eaten a whole bag of Delta 8 gummies. Last night I ate a whole bag of Delta 8 gummies. Well, there you go. Most people don't live lives like I do. They live a life where everybody pats them on the back and everybody has love for them. For me, I have no love. Not a single friend in this whole world. And even my own family hates me, and I know it. With every single word they say. Look, I'm sorry to hear that. Genuinely. But... That does sound pretty miserable, especially coming from the guy who said that atheists are miserable and that atheists don't experience any true love in their life. Could it be that when you said those things about atheists that you were projecting? Again, I am genuinely sorry about your circumstances, although I will say that obviously I don't know the details about what's going on. Because I don't believe the left-wing agenda, and it's the same goes for all my friends ex-friends, people who I thought were my friends, people who I genuinely cared about and who ended up learning that they hate me. Why? Because that's my entire life. Well, okay then. So your family hates you and your friends left you because you don't believe in the left-wing agenda. Now, if by the left-wing agenda you mean LGBTQ rights and women's rights, then I don't blame them. Especially when you say stuff like this. If you are a leftist, if you voted for Joe Biden, if you are an atheist, do the world a favor. Lock yourself into an insane asylum. Also, in the comments of your previous video, you also had this to say in response to a commenter. Yeah, I'm not even going to read that out loud. I do still feel sorry for you, Matthew, because I hate for anyone to not have friends or love in their life. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure you could have friends and love in your life if you just didn't say or believe stuff like all of that. I'm pretty sure you could help yourself out a little bit by just not being a hateful bigot. This isn't really reality. You know, the reality is what's going to happen when we die. That's the real world. It's the next life that matters. 
not this life. And that's the sad part of Christianity. And it's like I was saying earlier, if you're a Christian and you believe in heaven, then ultimately none of this matters. As long as you get right with the Lord before you die, you're going to live in a paradise of pleasure forever and ever. Or at least that's what you believe. Heaven has never been proven to exist and the Bible has never been demonstrated to be true. So you're throwing away the only life that we know we get in hopes of having another one after. That is extremely sad. You should enjoy the life that you know you have and maybe even try having a loving relationship with some of the people that you know do exist. I'm starting to get really sick of internet atheists harassing me. Obviously, nobody should be harassing anyone. But I will say that you've uploaded over 10,000 videos, I don't know how you manage that, and at least a few hundred of them are about atheists and leftists. And they're all extremely aggressive and condescending. You might could even call them harassment. So if you do have atheists arguing with you or being rude on your channel, that's probably why. But I'm starting to also realize that the only reason they do it is because they're so insecure in their own beliefs. Or maybe it's because you keep making videos calling them evil and stupid. They have to find this one thing that deep down they know is the truth. They know that Christians are living good lives. Real Christians. Absolutely not. If your life is a good one, then I don't want one. I'm not jealous. I am very happy with my miserable life. Real Christians follow what the Bible says, and what the Bible says is objectively good. Unless selling your daughter as a concubine without her consent, stoning disobedient children to death, or committing mass genocide and kidnapping the little girls and forcing them to marry you is objectively good, then no, the Bible most certainly is not. And so the atheists, they need to target Christians because literally the whole world that they're living in is this big game, this big facade trying to get them to not believe the Bible. You know, if it weren't for Christians targeting atheists, gay people, trans people, and everyone else who isn't a Christian or living a conservative Christian lifestyle, then I wouldn't even be doing this. And chances are, neither would most of the other atheists out there who are speaking out against Christianity. Christians like to act like the world is against them, but you're the ones going to war against the rest of the world. You're the ones threatening us with hellfire. You're the ones telling people that they can't love who they want to love or be who they want to be. It is not the other way around. You're the ones targeting us, and we are just defending ourselves from you. If you quit targeting us, then we will stop retaliating. If you still believe that the Earth is a spinning globe revolving around the sun and moving through the galaxy based upon all these CGI images and these people you call scientists who haven't stepped outside a day in their life to actually look at the stars, sun, and moon, and never picked up the Bible a day in their life, never researched the history of their own existence a day in their life, because if they did, they would find out that the entire Jewish and Christian religion and the Bible exists for a reason. So, you know, the fact of the matter is, you're not smart. You people are not smart. And of course, he's a geocentric flat earther. Of course. Matthew, CGI has only been around since the 1960s, and it looked like this. CGI wasn't photorealistic until the mid to late 1990s, and even that's being generous. People realized that the Earth was orbiting the Sun and not the other way around as far back as the 3rd century BCE, thanks to the Greek mathematician Aristarchus. And then, thanks to the later work of Nicholas Copernicus and Galileo Galilei, that knowledge became more widespread. And as far as the shape of the Earth goes, people have at least known that it was a globe since the 6th century BCE, thanks to Pythagoras. And and then, thanks to the work of Anaxagoras, Aristotle, and finally Aristosthenes, that debate was over. And by the way, Matthew, each one of these guys spent more time outside looking up at the stars in a single night than you likely ever will in your entire life. I'd like to know how many of the stars you have mapped out. Oh, and also, even if these brilliant astronomers and mathematicians hadn't figured it all out centuries or millennia ago, we do have satellites and space shuttles now, and cameras. We've got pictures of the Earth from space. And not only that, but there's also a live stream being broadcast 24-7 from the ISS. You can watch on YouTube as the ISS makes full orbits around the planet. And if for whatever reason you suspect that it's all CGI, you can actually use a telescope to watch as the ISS passes by overhead, confirming that it is indeed where it shows it to be in the live stream. It's not fake, Matthew, and it doesn't take a smart person to figure that out. I am definitely not smart, but there are a lot of smart people out there who do teach about astronomy 
astronomy and math and physics, I would recommend putting down the Bible and picking up one of their books. You could start with Carl Sagan. He's one of my personal favorites. And my favorite book of his is The Demon Haunted World, which is also a very relevant book for someone like yourself who's kind of in over your head with pseudoscience. Anyway, let's check out one more video from Matthew Curry. My impression of atheists. Oh, I finally found my purpose. It's to go around online harassing as many Christians as possible. Because I don't believe in God. So I'll spend my entire day, every single day, finding any person who stands up against the wickedness of this world, which I participated. Matthew, I do understand that from your perspective, it might look like atheists are all just out there harassing Christians and being flat out annoying. But the reason that I and other atheists like that floating circle guy do this is because we do care. Now, I've never been a flat earther, but I was once a Christian and I believed in all sorts of pseudoscience and I accepted all kinds of bigotry. And not because I wanted to be an idiot or because I wanted to be a bad person, but because that's what people told me was was true because that's what people told them was true. I like to think that most people who believe the things that I believed and believe the things that you believe don't want to be idiots or bad people either. You've just been told bad stuff. And I know that if I was able to get out of all of that garbage, then you can too. All you have to do is start thinking logically and asking questions because skepticism is the first step towards truth. Yep, I guess atheists are pretty hateful then. And I guess I need to work on my editing skills. Jeez, thanks for stepping in, Dallas. Go and check out Dallas's channel. The link is in the description. I'm going to skip tick this as another theist projecting. A big thank you to this month's top-level ticks on Patreon. Addy Rockart, The Enixes, Elizabeth Jukari, and The Absolute Lunatics, Jimmy and Travis, as well as all the $3 base ticks. You can become a supporter on Patreon too at patreon.com slash the skeptic the link is in the description along with links to all my other socials don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already from me the skeptic stay safe keep thinking logically and ask questions skepticism is the first step towards truth see you next saturday 